Welcome everybody. In this project, we're going to be focusing on exploratory data analysis. Now in the first project, we worked with this exact data set and we cleaned up the entire thing. And that was a really good project. And it set us up to explore the data. And with all that clean data, we'll be able to look at our data much better and find better insights while we are using it. Now, normally when you start the EDA process or the exploratory data analysis process, you have some idea of what you're looking for sometimes, not always. And sometimes when you're exploring the data, you also find issues with the data that you then have to clean. So even though I did a data cleaning video and then an exploratory data analysis video and they're kind of separate projects, sometimes those coincide together where you're exploring it and cleaning it at the same time. Now, what we're gonna be doing here with this data set, we're just gonna be kind of exploring it. I don't have any agenda. I don't have any, you know, one thing that I wanna look at. I just kind of wanna look at everything and we'll kind of discover and go uh, about things as we are learning and looking at this data set. We will, however, start off really simple with kind of the basics, work a little bit more towards the tougher stuff. And then at the end, we'll have some more advanced things that I think will be really fun. So with that being said, let's start off with kind of more easier things. We'll kind of just ease our way into exploring this data set. Let's pull this down and let's copy this right down here. Now we're going to be working with this total laid off and percentage laid off, or most likely this total laid off quite a bit. The percentage laid off isn't super helpful because we don't know how large the company is. We don't have another column here that says, here's how many total employees they had. And then, okay, they had a percentage laid off. You know, we won't work as much with this one, but we'll work quite a bit with this total laid off. Let's look real quick. We can look at something like the max uh, total and I need to use a parentheses max total laid underscore off. And let's look at this. So on one day, there was somebody out there who had the max total laid off of 12,000 people. That's a lot of people to lay off in one, you know, one go. That's a lot. Uh, let's also take a look at the max. And I think it was percentage laid off. Now let's run this. And it looks like one. Now one represents 100. That means 100% of the company was laid off. Um, and that's, you know, that's not great. Uh, it just means an entire company went under essentially. We can actually take a look at that because I'm interested to see, you know, if there's any companies I recognize or can see um, where, and you come right down here, where the percentage laid off is equal to one. Let's go ahead and look at this. And let's take a look. So we have this ahead. I'm just gonna go through here and see if I recognize any of these. Uh, bu -bu -bum. I'm in the crypto space, BlockFi. I feel like I recognize that one. I don't know. Uh, let's keep going. Deliveroo, it's not good. They left like of 120 people. Uh, I'm just curious. I mean, I'm, I'm just kind of scrolling through here trying to see if I recognize any. These are companies that like completely went under or lost all their employees. Volt Bank, interesting. Just interesting to me, we're gonna be taking a look at a lot of stuff, um, but these are companies that completely went under. Uh, and that's, you know, unfortunate. We can also order by uh, total underscore laid underscore off in descending, how you spell it, in descending, we'll see which company went under had the largest. So this one had 2,000, this construction company had 2,400 people, they went um, under. It doesn't say what stage they were at, but that's in the United States. We can also take a look at, and there's another column over here called funds raised in millions. Let's look at that one. So I'm gonna see, um, these are companies that had a lot of funding or potentially a ton of funding. Uh, let's go over. This is like $2.4 billion, I believe. Like I think it's like a ton of money. Um, Quibi, I believe I know this company. Uh, in BlockFi, I, I thought I had heard of them. I'm pretty sure I know who that is. So Quibi is one that I'm definitely familiar with. It was like a short form uh, media company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's British Volt, which looks like an electric company that went under. So, you know, some big companies that went under um, in 2023, 2020, 2022. So that's interesting. So we have a lot of companies here and we're just looking at um, that had totally laid off. But let's take a look. Let's, do, let's use group by real quick. I'm going to look at the company. And I also want to look at the sum of the total laid off. And for that, we need to use a group by the company. 
And let's just start with this. And I'm sure we'll use it order by in a second. Yeah, let's order by, order by, let's just do two for now in descending. And two stands for one, two, this is the total laid off. So uh, for the total for this table, and we don't know how far go back it goes. We haven't checked that yet. We'll check that in a second. But for this table, you should recognize a lot of these companies. So I think it starts in like 2020 until like sometime in 2023. But this is Amazon let go of 1800 people, Google 12,000. I'm guessing that's at one time because that was the max that we looked at earlier. Uh, this is Facebook or Meta, Salesforce, Microsoft, Philips, Uber, Dell, Cisco, Peloton. I mean, these are a ton of big companies. Carvana, they let go of thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Twitter, that's not surprising, uh, given what's the change of things. Groupon, um, ton of ton of people, or a ton of companies, and that's a lot of people that have been let go. Now, let's really quickly, uh, before we keep going, I want to look at our date ranges real quick. So let's select everything. Um, whoops, we'll do from there. And how do we want to do this? Let's do minimum of date. And let me do it like this, date. And then we'll do uh, the max as well, because I want to look at the date range that we have here. Let's run this. It looks like it starts in 2020 of 311. So right when like, I believe the pandemic started or the uh, COVID-19 started, I want to say that's like right when it hit at least us in the United States. And then this is almost exactly three years later. So early 2023. So just in those three years, you know, here's some of what we're looking at. These companies have let go of quite a few people or have had layoffs. We could also take this exact thing. Oops, what did I do here? Copy this again. We could also take this exact thing and look at quite a few other things. There was... Um, the industry, so we can look at industry, like what industry got hit the most during this time or had the most layoffs. Um, all we're looking at right now is total laid off. We can also look at um, percentage in a little bit, but it looks like consumer got hit really hard, retail really hard. That makes a lot of sense with shops closing down because people couldn't come in for the coronavirus. Now we're just making assumptions, right? Um, but you know, during that time, it was mostly COVID that impacted a lot of stuff. Then we have transportation, finance, healthcare, food, real estate. Um, yeah, there's a lot, a lot of people. Let's look at the lowest ones. Manufacturing, fintech, aerospace, energy, legal. So low numbers on those, high numbers on these. So really, really interesting. Uh, let's go back up. Just want to look at our whole table really quickly, see what we got while we're looking at this stuff. And let's run this. And we looked at the company, looked at the industry. I would really be interested to look at the country as well, which countries, at least from this data set, and we can copy or we can go right here, country, because I believe that United States had the most. Holy mackerel. They had by far the most. Uh, then India, this is 256,000 people. Um, lost their jobs. We'll look, I think we'll look at the dates in a little while, like a kind of like time series, like how many per year, per month, per day, or whatever we want to look at. But goodness gracious, uh, that's a lot of people within just three years in the United States. India, Netherlands, Sweden, Brazil, Germany, uh, United Kingdom, then it goes down and down and down. Uh, but these are just reported um, from this data set that I, I had gotten. So really, really interesting. Good night. The United States had much more than than most for sure. Um, let's actually look at that date real quick, or we can look at it by year. Um, so we have this date, and if we do it like this, and we can do it by date real quick. So this is gonna do it by individual date. And let's order by, let's do one. This is the most recent date. So it's literally by date that's reported. Uh, we don't want that. Let's do it by the year, so 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. We can do that fairly easily. We'll use this year function and we'll group by the year as well. Let's try running this. There we go. It looks like in 2020, 80,000 people, 2021, uh, 16,000, 160,000 in 2022. This looks like the worst year. And then it's only, we only have three months of data in 2023. There's 125,000, holy smokes. 
So in 2023, it looks like we're ramping up because I'm recording this in 2023, about a month after this data set uh, that we got this data set. There's 125,000 people um, around the world, you know, but just in those first three months. So this is going to be a lot higher than even 2022. That's pretty wild. Um, very, very interesting. One other one, one while we're looking at group by, um, there's, there was a column, and you can go back and look at it if you'd like, but it's called stage. And this shows the stage of the company. And if we run this, and we're all just looking at total laid off. But if you look at the um, stage of the company, this is like the different series that they're in, A, B, C, D. A, I believe, is like a series A funding. That's like a super, super starting. Oh, this is like a seed phase. And then there's series A, and then it goes up, 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 until usually they go... Um, like they do IPO or they get acquired or something. Now, if we go up here and we do two descending, I want to see which one had the most. So this is post IPO. This is the Amazon, the Googles of the world, the large, large companies that are post IPO or initial public offering. Then there's unknown. We don't know which that is. Um, a lot of, you know, layoffs from acquisitions, C, D, B, all the way down. So it looks like um, most of it's coming from, you know, these ones right here. Really, really interesting. Let's go look at percentages. I'm just gonna literally cop trying to say literally. I'm gonna literally copy these. Um and with percentages, I don't think uh let me look at percentage layout. I don't think the sum is going to be a good indicator. I don't know if this is a good one to even look at. Because and then we're looking at company right now, because percentages refer to a percent of the company, right? So we don't have hard numbers because we don't know how large these companies are. So now that we're actually looking at this, this percentage laid off isn't super relevant. Um, really the one that's kind of more, you know, has better, this is a better use for what we're looking at is this total laid off. Because again, we don't know these sums. We could we could look at like the average, right? Um, but again, that just doesn't help us that much. I don't think, um, I think we're gonna really dive into that too much is my, uh, is my feeling. Now, one thing that I would be really interested in is to kind of look at the progression of layoff, right? Uh, you could call this a rolling sum. So start at the very earliest of layoffs and do a rolling sum until the very end of these layoffs. Um, and let's go to the bottom. This is where it's going to start getting a, a little tougher. Um, and there's, you know, we're just doing a little bit of exploratory data analysis, you know, do, digging into this a little bit. You can go and dig into this as much as you'd like. You don't have to just do what I'm doing, but I'm just trying to show you some stuff. Now, let's try to do rolling total of layoffs. Um, we could do that on the day, although I feel like that's going to be way too many rows. Let's do it based off the month. So right here in this month. Now, let's see. If we do just the month, let's do something. I'll show you the month, and that's going to be an issue. And I'll sh I, I'm In my head, I already know. But let's look at it. We could do something like select... Um, from and let's get this. There we go. So if we do, um, we'll do substring. Let me add a semicolon. Let's do substring, and we want to pull out this month right here. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. So start at position six, um, and this is of course in the date column. We'll start at position six, and then we'll take two. Let's just run this really quickly. And there's our month. So this we could do this as month, right? Um, or like this. Is that correct? Yeah. So as month. So this is our month that we're doing it. Now, if we group on this and we do like something like a sum of total uh, laid off, I think that's the column. And then we do a group by on this month. So it'd be like this right here. We'll do group by this. Let's try running this. We should be able to do month as well. Let's try this real quick as well, because I don't want to have this if I don't have to. Run it. Perfect. So the months right here don't show us the year. So if we're trying to get a rolling to total of just the month, it's actually could work fine when we actually implement the, the rolling total use, um, you know, a window function. But the issue with this is it's just going to show us month. So this is 2020. This is January of 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, any 
other years we have it, this is not a great rolling total. What if we did one all the way to, I want to say it's seven, six, seven. Let's try this. Now this is going to give us a much better, and let's order this, order by uh, one ascending. This is just our first column. So now, uh, well, we should do it where it's not. Give me a second. I'm, I'm, I'm figuring this out as we go. We'll do where uh, the month, write that, where the month is not null. I'm just going to get rid of that one. And of course, uh, that doesn't work because we're looking at the substring. So let's try doing this. Let's, there we go. Um, it just wasn't reading in that month that I was trying to use. Let's go down. Now, here's what we're going to do is we want to take it from the very first month and we're grouping everything. So these are all the layoffs from 2020 of 03. So that's March of 2020. Then we have April, May, and these are the layoffs. So this is really good. This is exactly what I was imagining in my head. So we want this, and this is just you know 12 months in a year, and we go all the way to the bottom. And I want to do a rolling sum of this. So let's see how we can do that. And we'll use this logic in a little bit. Let's copy this. And let's do select everything. We'll do right here. Now what we actually want to do, now that I'm thinking about it, is when you want to take this data, and we want to do the rolling sum based off this exact thing. So we actually need to take uh, this, get rid of this and we'll do it with a CTE. So we'll say with and we'll do rolling underscore total that we'll say as and then we'll put this in here just like that. So with rolling total as now we're going to say select and we'll just do from here. Now what we need to do is we need to select the month. So let's go ahead and select that month and we'll take it just like this. So we'll select the month. And we need to do a rolling total. All we have to do for that is the sum of which column we're doing. Let's actually change this real quick. Um, we're going to call this as um, total off. <laughs> I'm just going to keep it simple. So the sum of total off. So now we're doing that, but we want to do it over. And all we need to add into here is an order by. We're not going to partition by anything because in here we already did a group by. So it's, you know, kind of like partitioning it. We just need to say order by. And we just need to order by the month, I believe. So let's try that. And let's run it. Let's do that. And we actually need to, since we're doing um, this, we need this at the end. And we can rename this if we'd like. So we can do this as rolling underscore total all lowercase. Now let's try running this. And let's see what we get. Okay. And this looks correct. So starting in 2020 of 03, we had 9,000 layoffs. Then the next total we added onto here. Now, this visually isn't the best. I would like the month right here as well. So let me actually add, um, let me create its own row, put a comma here, and then right here, I want to keep this total off so we can visually see better, much better. Okay, so we have the month, and as it goes down, we're having more laid off. Now this is our rolling total. Here's essentially how this works. It starts with 9,628, then it adds on the next month, which is 26,000, which equals 36,000. Then it adds on the next month and we get 62. Adds on the next month, 69, right? It keeps going all the way down. This just shows each month how many were laid off. And this shows a month by month progression all the way down to the bottom. So let's keep, let's just, you know, take a look. So in 2020 of 03, we had 9,000. By the end of 2020, we had about 81,000 or so. Then at the beginning, right here, all the way down to 2021. By the end of 2021, we only had 96,000. So 2021 was a good year, it looks like, um, comparatively. We had 90, 80, well, let me see, 91,000 people let go. And here we only have 96,000 let go. So that's what, uh, or 81, that's only like 15,000 people. That's like nothing, um, comparatively. Then in 2022, uh, things start ramping up dramatically. It looks like we have um, 12,000 people, 17,000, 16,000, and they're adding up. 
it's going from 97 all the way up to good night. Um, right before the holidays in 2022 of this past year, I mean, we had uh, 247,000 people. So that's like 130 some thousand. No, my, math, my math's really bad. It's like 150,000. And then we only have, oh, we have even more here actually. And then we only have the first three months of 2023. So these months right here were really devastating. It's just around the world. Now we can also break this out potentially by country. So we can see how many per country, but this is just around the world. That's a lot of people losing their jobs all the way up to 383,000. So in this range, 383,000 from March of 2023, all the way back to March of 2020, lost their jobs. And this is just reported. I'm sure there was, uh, you know, much more than that. But this is at like at companies, larger companies that have like Series A funding, IPOs, et cetera. Um, but a lot of small businesses went out of business. Um, so we don't, we don't have that information in this data set. So I think that's what we're going to do next is kind of look at the company maybe, because I'm always interested in the company. And actually earlier, let's not do that one. Earlier, we're looking at the company, the sum of totally loft. Let's, um, let's bring this down. Let's run that. Because that, that's what rolling total is, by the way. Rolling totals are great. Um, really good for visualizations as well. Um, let's see. Yeah, so I want to take a look at these companies, but I want to see how much they were laying off per year. So instead of just looking at it as a total, we'll break it out by the year. Now, I'm just going to warn you, this is probably going to, this most likely will be our last one in the, in the lesson. This is going to be probably our hardest one yet, um, potentially. We'll see. Maybe the other one was earlier, uh, was harder earlier. Now, let's use this kind of as um, a starting point. But what we're going to need to do is we want to take the company, but I also want the date. So I need to do a comma, and then date. So we need our date here, and I'm going to do that. I need to group by the date as well. So we'll do date, and let's run this. All right. Now, this is just doing the you know, company and the exact date. We don't want to do that. Let's actually do the year. Let's just look at the year. I think that'll be plenty. You could also do the exact same thing as we did above with the substring, um, although I think that's going to get a little messier um, stuff, you know, just a thought. Let's run this. Okay, so now we're looking at just the year. We're grouping by year. And let's order by, uh, let's say, the company. And we'll do that in ascending. There we go. And let's run this. So now we have it open. Let's see who, you know, you can see people who made multiple layoffs. This is in 2020, they let go of 200. And then in 2023, they let go of 155. This is a company I've never heard of. So this is already looking really good. Now, let's say we wanted to use this. And what we want to do is we want to rank which years they laid off the most employees. Now, this is just a small uh, sample. We'll look at more in just a little bit. We can actually look at, um, let's just do three. Uh, three descending, just like this. Should be large companies. So you know some of these companies like Microsoft, even Amazon right here and Amazon right there. They let go of multiple or thousands of people in different years. So I want to rank those. I want to say you know the highest one uh, based off of the laid off should be ranked number one. That's the year that they laid off the most people. So let's go ahead and try to do that. Thing we need to do is uh, do a CTE. We'll start with that. Let me, um, let me add some more things down here so we're good to go. So let's do, we'll do with, let's do uh, company. So this is going to be the company year, underscore year. We'll do it as, and that's what this is going to be. This is our company year. And we can do select everything from company year. It's going to be the exact query that we're looking at. Let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so this is good. Now I do want to change these columns and I can do that right here. We'll do company, uh, let's call this years, and then we'll do, I'm gonna do total laid off again. So total underscore laid underscore off. This is the sum, right? Total laid off uh, per year. So let's go ahead and run this now. There we go. We have company, years, and total laid off. So this looks much better. And what we're going to do is select everything, but we want to partition it uh, probably based off this years right here. And then we want to rank it based off how many they laid off in that year. 
So we'll get to see who laid off the most people per year. Because some companies like Amazon, they let, they let off multiple people per year. But was it the highest per year? That's kind of what we're going to look at. Um, so we'll do dense underscore rank. And we're going to do that over. Now we're going to partition by. Oops, that's not how you spell partition. Partition by. We want to partition by the years. So all of the 2021 layoffs will be in the same uh, partition. All of the 2022 will be in the same partition. And we'll do years. And we want to also order by the total laid off. Now we want to do that in descending. So we'll do total laid off descending. And then we want to um, add this dense rank to it. So let's try it. Let's run this. Good night. That's a, a big one. So let's take a look. So in 2021, it looks like, um, or 2020, it looks like Uber had the highest. And we want to take out these nulls. So let's do um, where years, let's say, is not null. And let's run that. There we go. So in 2020, and that's what we're partitioning on first, it looks like this is one, two, three. These are the top ones. Um, and let's order by, and let's do the, let's order by the rank um, first. Let's call this as, bring it down. What do we want to call this? We'll call this as ranking. There we go. So order by ranking. Ascending. There we go. Now we have our ranking. So in 2020, this is the biggest one of layoffs. 2021, this is the biggest layoff, I guess. We'll have to take a look. In Meta, in 2022, they had the biggest layoff. And Google had the biggest layoff total uh, for 2023. So this looks correct. But I kind of want to filter on this ranking to be able to only filter maybe the top like five um companies per year and i think we can do that let's actually get rid of this i think what we should do is we should add this as another cte and query off of that so now we'll call this company underscore year underscore rank so now we have the year rank as we'll have our query oops have our query so now this is our company year rank. So now if we do select everything from company year rank, this, we run it. Okay, so now we have our rankings. Let's come down. Now we have our rankings, but I just want to filter it based off of that ranking. We'll say uh, where ranking is greater than or equal to, let's say five. We'll look at the top five rankings. Let's run this. And I said greater than. I wanted uh, less than on that. That's looking good. Okay. So really quickly, we have in 2020, we had these are the top five people who laid people off. Uber, Booking.com, Groupon, Swiggy, Airbnb. In 2021, the largest layoff was ByteDance, which I think is TikTok, right? Uh, Katera, Zillow. Uh, yeah, these are the top five. So 2021 and, or 2022 and 2023 were definitely the largest as well. We have Meta, 11,000 people, Amazon, Cisco, Peloton, and Carvana, as well as Philips. They tied. That's why we have the dense ranking, because some of these will be ties. And then we have Google uh, in 2023, all the way down to Dell. And these are all ones I know. Microsoft, Ericsson, Amazon, Salesforce, and Dell. So this is really, really interesting. Just looking at a year by year snapshot, right? These are the total laid off for each company. And we could even go back and change this for like industry or, you know, really whatever we want to change this to. This is just an interesting query in general to look at, you know, per year. And we could go back and change this per month or you know, lots of stuff we can change in here. But this is really interesting to me. Um, it just looks like a lot of the large tech companies had some took some big L's. Took some big hits. Um, let's recap this query really quickly in case you know it's tough to follow. But we created this query up here, and we were looking at the company by the year and how many people they let off. Then right over here, we said with the company year, and we changed these columns. This is our CTE. So we created our first CTE. Then we went and we gave it a rank, and we wanted to 
you know, filter on that rank. So we did this rank as another CTE. We just did a comma, had a second CTE, and we hit off the first CTE, the company year, which is right here. So we hit off our first CTE to make this second CTE. And then finally, we um, queried off of the final CTE. Definitely not an easy query to kind of think through and walk through, but I hope, you know, you're able to follow um, because, you know, that's a, a, a really good query. This is something I've definitely done in a real job when I was working with a lot of healthcare data. This is uh, a lot of stuff that I would do. And so this is a, you know, pretty good, um, a pretty good query to know how to do. But with that being said, uh, we are done with this lesson. I hope this wasn't too short. I don't know how long I ran, but, um, you know, we looked at a lot of different stuff. Let's go back to the top. Again, we were just exploring the data. We looked at lay it off a lot. Um, looked a lot at the company, uh, when these dates actually started for these layoffs in this data set. We looked at the country, the actual year of laid off. Uh, then we went to a little bit more difficult things. We looked at it per month. So per month, um, how many layoffs they had. And then we did a rolling total. And this one was a pretty good one using that substring. Um, I love substrings, man. They're awesome. Or lady, they're awesome. Uh, and then we came down here. And we did the one we just did with multiple CTEs in the company. I think it was a, a really, really good, solid project. Um, combine that with that data cleaning project. And man, you got a, just a really good start with some MySQL projects. And this one can be expanded upon. Don't stop where I stopped, right? Let me go back to the top. Don't stop where I stopped, right? This data set has so much data in it. You can do a lot of different things. And even if you want to, you could go and find these companies right over here, and you could try to uh, get their total uh, total company that they had. And you could use this column a lot more. And that'd be really interesting with some calculations there. So with that being said, that is the end of our exploratory data analysis project. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something both in the data cleaning project and in this exploratory data analysis project. That's what this is all about. And getting the confidence and gaining the experience to create these projects and add those to your portfolios. Speaking of which, if you haven't already, check out my video on how to create a free portfolio website uh, using GitHub. Awesome. I highly recommend it. And you can add these to your portfolio. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, if you learned anything at all, be sure to like and subscribe below. Check out my channel for tons of other videos just like this one and more. I will see you in the next video.